good evening everyone good evening to the ascent community uh, thank you for joining us today for this ask the expert uh, session on is digitization the need of the hour for smes uh, most of us will agree that the simple short answer to this question is yes uh, but unfortunately life fortunately or unfortunately life throws more nuanced questions at us and so to really deep dive into these nuanced questions about the what how why of digitization uh, we have our speaker today uh, mr dhawal gusain uh, dhawal is a btech uh, from iit kharagpur uh, he also holds an mba from stanford uh, business school uh, and to add to the school impressive degrees he also has a decade and a half working with some of the uh, biggest schoolest brands we know today so unilever booz and company Uh, the viral fever and there were two of the shows that you made i love uh, panchayat as well as aspirants aspirants actually made me wish i had gone down that upsc uh, route that that's how attractive it was made to seem uh, and now uh, most recently at disney plus hotstar uh, the reason that was here today is that he did, he recently did a session on technology and on going digital uh, with a smaller group of ascent members who are part of the ascent accelerator program that we've launched last year uh, they highly recommended it and therefore we are bringing this to the wider ascent community uh, we hope you enjoy today's uh, session uh, my name is akshay purohit um, i am a last minute replacement for sahil who was supposed to be the moderator uh, for the session today uh, and my role today is to bring in as much of insights uh, of dhawal's insights uh, to this group um, in the next one hour uh, my company neptunus power is actually in the business of getting um, shipping uh, so ship uh, ships uh, offshore supply vessels oil rigs and the defense industry into a digital mode of maintenance so moving away from the traditional manner of maintenance to more condition based using iot using remote monitoring and therefore digitization is a topic close to my heart i'm also a member of a set i've been part of the gods of growth trust group for 7 years now Uh, the theme for today digitization is easy to get overawed by the concepts today you know these big concepts like crypto metaverse nfts or stories such as reliance uh, you know paying uh, 132 million dollars for a, to invest in a robotics company seem uh, often distant to most sme owners uh, and so today's session is intended to make it relatable uh, make the journey of digitization relatable to sme owners uh, while the session is curated by with the questions that were asked by sme members when they registered for this uh, there will be 15 to 20 minutes at the end of the session as well uh, for more questions so please please continue to send in your questions as and when they uh, strike you on to the q and a section of the uh, zoom video call um, as always at the end we will have a feedback form so we request you to please fill up that feedback form um dabal i must thank you very much for joining us today and for giving us uh, giving us your time um we're looking forward to the session today um and let's start off with uh, you know i'd like to start off with defining digitization so how do you define digitization for an sme uh, so that it's relatable to an sme uh, you know we had several questions coming in from the sme member several you know nagging doubts i'm a service business i'm a trading business i'm into traditional manufacturing um and so what what i'd like you to do please is to map this digitization journey to such businesses can you lay down on a spectrum what digitization means for a company uh, maybe starting from the basics to more uh, advanced forms of digitization sure so first of all uh, thank you so much uh, akshay archana ruchika for giving me this opportunity it's uh, truly a pleasure and a privilege uh, mm -hmm. to be a uh you know speaking to this group uh, unfortunately i would have loved to do this in person so that we could have made it much more interactive but so are the needs of these times that unfortunately we can't even see the faces of the participants uh, uh i would apologize to start with my internet connections are a little sketchy but i'll try my level best so i'm in a better position i'm using all the internet bandwidth available to me right now but even if some glitch happens i'll request akshay to take over we had a conversation about this earlier as well uh and uh, again uh, let let me start with a disclaimer right so i think ask the expert is a very onerous term <laughs> i am not expert by any stretch of imagination what i would rather like to do is you know share some of the learnings that along the way i got working for some of the companies that uh, uh, that akshay talked about 
And I hope that some of those learnings might be useful for you and the broader group as well. Uh, and I think right off the bat, Akshay started with one of the most difficult questions, define digi digitization. So I remember back in the day, some of the most difficult questions were to define a particular concept or a philosophy, right? Because if you get that wrong, everything after that will be wrong. So that's the nature of the question. So with that, let me try my level best to answer it in as uh, first principles as I can. So see, at the end of the day, why are we digitizing, right? So when I think of it in a very layman's term, I think of digitization or for that matter, any kind of business strategy that I follow that it serves one of a few needs, right? So some of the needs are, so for instance, right? One need is serving your customers better, right? Both acquiring the new ones or you know, servicing the existing ones better. The second one probably for digitization, which is like a fairly, you know, self-explanatory is to drive cost efficiencies for the lack of better word, right? Or higher ROI. And maybe the third, as uh, uh, Akshay was also pointing out, the more advanced form of it is to actually create some innovative, disruptive models, which are just not possible in an offline environment. So what I thought was maybe I'll just share some examples across three these three broad buckets. And gradually it will go from something that you know everybody can do to some things where you know you really need that capital, intent, you know, and full willpower to get it done. So let's start with the first one, right? Which is just to ensure that how do you serve your customers better, right? So I think, so let's say you are an offline retailer, right? Let's start off an offline retailer as an SME today with a shop or a few shops, right? So if you list your catalog on an online e-commerce platform like Amazon, Flipkart, Shopify, what you will, right? You not only tap in new customer pool, you also provide the existing customers with an additional option to purchase from you, right? Now, example I gave the same logic, whether across sectors or across functional areas, it will give you additional revenue streams, right? The second, secondly, you know, the pandemic has also created an urgency to digitize sooner than later, right? What otherwise would have been, right? given the user preferences are shifting very, very drastically and very, very quickly, right? So a case in point, let me just bring it from something which I have done for the past five, seven years is media industry. So prior to pandemic, and uh, I was speaking to, I think, uh, uh, you know, movies distribution was a very different business altogether. So movies were launched first in theaters and then they had a window for two to three months before we took them to other distribution modalities like TV or uh, digital or whatnot, right? But theaters were the prime way of distributing the movies when they were launched. Now, obviously during the pandemic, when the theaters were shut, a number of movies were debuted only on digital, right? And got a great response. Since on the demand side of the equations, and it's already shifted to more platforms like Hotstar or Netflix or whatnot. So now this is a fundamental shift in user behavior, which I believe will now persist even after the pandemic is over. Right? So even when the pandemic is done, I seriously doubt that theaters will be seen the same way that they were thought at the pre-pandemic levels. Right? Uh, just il illustrate the point around you know, adding more revenue or users or serving customers better. I was just reading another survey report where somebody mentioned so I think the survey was conducted by a company called Local Circles and had around 6,200 odd startups and uh, MSNEs. Uh, and more than a quarter of the respondents reported almost 100 to 500% increase in their online sales in the first 12 months of the pandemic. So it is happening, right? So this is something which is, as Akshay is pointing out, it's not a question of if anymore, it's a question of when. When do you do it, right? Rather than if you should do it or not do it. Now, Moving slightly differently onto the second point where we are talking about, you know, how do we drive better cost efficiency, which honestly, in a way is self-explanatory, right? So obviously we have talked about the top line in the previous point, how do you get new customers or new revenue streams, so on and so forth. There are two other things that digitization or automation, if you will, and I believe that's what uh, Akshay also talked about his own company, Neptune, uh, that it definitely helps you in two ways, right? It does cost reduction. And it also does what is called cost avoidance. Now, obviously I'll talk a little bit about what cost avoidance means because that's a very uh, difficult to quantify in financial terms, right? So cost reduction is self-explanatory, right? Because obviously you're digitizing or automating. The easiest example is that you're taking away some manual step, right? And no matter how you skin the cat or slice that, dice the onion, you will figure out that the cost of automation is always a very small fraction 
of the manual effort that was put to do that particular part. The second piece, which is equally important though difficult to process, and uh, the cost of the mistake uh, can be anything. You can lose a customer for life. You can lose a group of customers for life. Right. So at times it becomes extremely difficult to quantify. But what digitization or automation allows you to do is to ensure that you don't make those mistakes. Right. And I'm sure that in each of our businesses, we have all made mistakes and we have seen that if we just had automated that process, probably it would have done with far more precision than a manual step itself. Right. So that's on the second point. Now, third point, honestly, when you're talking about, you know, how can digitization give us something which is disruptive or, uh, you know, very innovative. So again, let me take an example from my own industry, right? And I'll give you two comparisons, right? So I think there was the first wave of digitization. So where a lot of online companies or startups were created that more often than not mimicked an offline behavior online, right? So let's take Netflix or Hotstar for that matter, right? In a way, what we are mimicking is the kind of behavior that we used to exhibit back in the day when we used to go for you know those video tapes or video cassettes or you know, TV that we like, right? And we used to play that particular part out. So what has happened that Netflix or Hotstar gives us in the kind of experience? You land onto a homepage, you see a bunch of titles, you see what you like, and then you just start playing that particular part, right? Then there's a different kind of a play, something like a TikTok, right? That was just not possible in the offline environment, right? Because TikTok is literally telling you that at this point in time, this is exactly what you want to see, right? Because the moment you open that app, or for that matter, any short form app in India, they'll tell you exactly this is what you want to see at this point in time. The reason we can do it is because right now we have the AI and the machine learning and the neural nets on the background. better than what you yourself could have done. Now, those are the disruptive plays that when you're going down that particular path, you need to see that online or digitization opens up a plethora of opportunities, which are just not possible in the erstwhile life, right? And actually, I'll also ask you to add, because I heard that you're also using IoT, because I'm sure that would, uh, you know, have opened a bunch of things that were just not possible when you were doing it more in a manual manner for that, for that, for that matter. So we have been on this journey. We've been a maintenance company for the past 25 years, uh, trying to get more technology in uh, into our customers' assets, uh, processes over the last four or five years. Uh, one of the challenges that I'd like you to uh, Dawal, maybe uh, talk about is that finance people, business people love, uh, love ROI. And it's very hard to put a cost to uh, a potential breakdown or a failure uh, of a rig that of a rig or the engines of a rig that do not happen uh, because the customer can you know, I mean uh, who's to prove that it is because of your system or uh, because of your technology so uh, while this I'm not asking you to help solve uh, that problem for me but how do you uh, can you give an example of how one of these digitization projects can uh, can be measured in terms of its ROI and convert it into its dollar impact uh, you said that it, you know, most often you see that it's a fraction of the cost uh, of that uh, that is saved. Uh, so something maybe from your experience where you can uh, give us all the confidence that yes, this is going to be only a fracture of, you're going to save a lot more than you spent on this. So I'll give you a short answer. I cannot do that. So, but what I can do actually is, uh, see, uh, and again, I know there might be finance people. So with all due respect to the people and the participants who are from finance, See, more often than not, uh, I've always, uh, at least in my companies that I've worked with, we have always dabbled with the fact of saying that, you know, is finance controlling strategy or strategy controlling finance, right? Mm. So it's a very subtle and nuanced difference, but a very important one. What I have understood, at least for the, all the high performing companies that I've been a part of, uh, or where the startups which have worked, it has always been the latter, that strategy has to control finance, not the previous one. And I'll give you a very macro example for that, right? Obviously, it may not be very tenable for uh, an SME or you know, how do you extrapolate from here? See, come to think of it, right? Uh, India, for the longest time, uh, it's a low R2 country, right? And many times people have asked that, hey, the startup ecosystem is heating up. The valuations are unprecedented. They are not even realistic. 
it at often times this kind of argument right why are we building when we are losing money i i think right, and i'll give you an example and i think a very interesting take that you will see that if you try to map the gdp per growth uh, the gdp per capita growth of china versus the valuation of the top 3 big companies right, which are often called bat baidu alibaba and z there is a very interesting point that happens around 2008 and 9 when the gdp per capita of china exceeds around 335 400 4000 kind of levels all of a sudden the market capitalization of bat goes through the roof the reason for that was because then people started getting the disposable income and they started spending but yes to get to the ten pole position to make the most benefit of it they had to keep investing for at least 4 to 5 years prior to that right and many people had asked the similar question there as well like why are you spending that much to when you are making losses and the idea was that at some point in time when the timing is right this will give us the benefit which will far exceed the cost of it right now again there's a phenomenally macro example where we are talking about a country and the economies and how do they swing but in a way it's also a little relevant to us as well right now obviously so my advice often times is that finance should not be seen as the decision making variable rather it should always be seen as a guardrail that you should not exceed because we all operate with the budget constraints and stuff like that so obviously that has to be taken into account okay so says things are more difficult to quantify in financial terms as compared to others so for instance in my previous example that i was talking about it's very easy to quantify revenue right it's also easy to quantify cost reduction what is extremely difficult to quantify is cost avoidance right what is the cost of that mistake that once you make will have a domino effect on both your top line and your bottom these are not easy problem when people talk about digital marketing right so there's a huge component of digital marketing around i give you immediate returns and like a performance marketing awareness campaigns don't give you returns but then you are doing these things for your long term viability of your brand right so it requires requires so my own submission is to your point achay is like finance should never be seen as a decision making criteria it should always be seen more as a card play okay, makes sense makes sense uh, no, that was also understood that but and with your smile i am as not no I, i i agree with you but i wish our customers uh, you know whether it's the indian army whether it's the uh, uh, there is big drilling companies in the middle east i wish they understood that as well uh, uh, dhavan uh, so you absolutely uh, the one thing always actually remains is like you know there's a core rule of thumb in finance which says you know uh, liquidity so irrationality often outlasts liquidity <laughs> unfortunately it is the truth mm-hmm. so you have to that's the reason i'm saying you know finance is a very important guard rail mm-hmm. that you should always plan that you know irrationality will outlast your liquidity and what will you do when that happens okay uh, so that will uh, getting to uh, getting to the first two pillars that you spoke about maybe both the customer uh, you know the customer experience or connecting with them better uh, and the cost efficiency i guess in today's session maybe we can talk a little bit more uh, about those because that might be more uh, relevant to this uh, to this uh, group here uh, so i know there's no easy answer to this but uh, what is the recommended flow roadmap that a company can follow beyond the basic you know accounting software erp hrms communications etc uh, where uh, what which processes would you recommend uh, uh, starting off with for a typical sme any tools that you suggest uh, as a must have uh, on both the customer front as well as the efficiency uh, cost efficiency front so i think akshay what my understanding or at least what my two cents would uh i'm sorry i dropped off for a minute yes, is, sure, okay thanks thanks uh, again very sorry for this unfortunately <laughs> i'm just trying to figure out how to make it work so uh, akshay just to uh, uh, come back to the question that you were asking i think my two cents to would be that there are not of low hanging fruits when we look at customer itself like even before we go into cost efficiencies mm. uh, at least one thing i understood 
was just understand, get to your customers in a much better way, right? And everything else is, it, it, it's a very customer centric approach, right? Customer is right at the center of everything and anything that you do. I think the, the lowest hanging fruit is ensure that you are wherever your customer is, right? Now, I'm not saying that you have to make a fancy website and you need to have all the digitized tools and support all the FinTech equipment, the payment instruments, which are there in the back end. I don't mean that. I just mean that do simple things, just create WhatsApp business groups, right? Just ensure that your product catalog is listed on at least two or three e-commerce websites, right? Where you believe that your customers are. Yes, if you have the money, by all means, you can have your own website because you can do a far better job of explaining to your customers what you do on your website service on an Amazon or a Flipkart. But do it in an incremental way. But first, ensure that you are wherever your customers go. Right? And that's, for me, very paramount. It's not expensive. And unlike what people believe, that's a very expensive proposition. It's not. Right? You just need to do this 24-7, right? As a matter of fact, WhatsApp, please say, like, for instance, me shows of the word or Shopify's of the word, right? They have done a phenomenal job of creating those communities and linking them to the customers and ensuring that they get a phenomenal experience from that perspective, right? It is digitization, nothing fancy, but literally a one at least in my head. The second thing then comes to the part of cost efficiency. See, cost efficiency is one thing at least I have seen is, and again, there is no silver bullet for it that traditionally see what used to happen back in the day i am telling you my time in levers right so when I, I remember when in levers they were implementing erp right oh my god that was a project in itself <laughs> right so they had got sap consultants and this and that and god only knows what not and we were taking through training sessions and modules right and unfortunately the interfaces were so counterintuitive right i saw those interfaces and they seemed like yes yeah, seriously how do you work with these kind of things? Right? They are nothing but automation, HTML, HTML version of Excel files. Right? That's what they were. Now, things have progressed quite a bit. Now, today, I like anybody, but if you download, you know, if you just go on Salesforce website, right? eight out of the 10 things, you don't even need any help. You can pretty much set it up on your own, right? majority of these. And I'm not talking about, and, and because what has happened that B2B come, also become extremely customer centric. Mm -hmm. They have also become very customer centric. My only suggestion is that instead of, you know, planning some very esoteric tool for your CRM or trying to do it natively, before that, just go on to these uh, SaaS companies and they have a lot of tools, very simple to understand. Any of CRM all the modules and like right? that would be my point too right before you dwell into anything which is very fancy of saying hey let me have my own cloud infrastructure and this and that don't do that to start with right? that comes a little later so that will be my two cents just to add to like where do we start the journey and yeah once you get comfortable with these things right then obviously you can build on that right whichever direction you then you can keep on building with that but at least this will ensure that your basics are met okay. So uh, to build it in house, so to build it in house, or whether to outsource it is always a question because you know budgets are a constraint. Uh, SMEs, this is not necessarily the first place where they decide to uh, where they decide to put in surplus funds or invest in. Uh, so if you are deciding to do it in house, what sort of expertise do you require, especially if you're a founder or a founding team who's not that technology savvy? Um, what you know what resources what expertise will help drive such initiatives in a uh, you know 550 100 150 500 uh, crore company so let me just be very clear actually honestly today in today's day and age of cloud computing and like those kind of things there's not a single company i can think of that's doing everything in house right so let's take our example right so uh, we use something called a CDN, right? Which is called a content delivery network, right? So that is how our content is finally delivered to the app. Because, uh, so, or we are using cloud infrastructure. We, it's not ours. We still use AWS, right? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Amazon is being with us, right? So okay, like, there is absolutely no benefit of trying to build everything on your own, right? It, if I, any stretch of imagination because the kind of infrastructure that Amazon provides us in 
he decided to go down a particular path, billions of dollars and multiple years. For what? They are providing advice to people who don't try to be out there. Even because they are already, Amazon is already leveraging the economies of scale and scope. They can provide you with the cloud functionality much cheaper than in Samsung. Uh, let me just try to reconnect. Uh, is it is it is it uh, Rakesh and Arvind? Yes, it is currently better. Uh, hello, Akshay, can you hear me? Yeah, it is currently better. Uh, I'm, I'm again apologize. Uh, unfortunately, it's not uh, your end; it's my end. Uh, it, this 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 is uh, unfortunate. A place for me to contact the public your, education uh, right now. So sorry for that again. Maybe that one you could turn your video off. It might become a little like a podcast, but uh, that might help the audio at least. Okay. So yeah, that might help. I hope this is better now. Uh, yes, at least that sentence. At least that sentence was. Uh, so that was my question. Was not so much about putting in, of course, AWS, etc., has to be leveraged, but even to use these tools uh, or use SaaS tools that you mentioned uh, in house. Most SMEs don't have because you know you have those traditional uh, uh, IT administrator, sales, marketing, HR roles. Uh, so, what kind of roles or expertise is required even to use these external tools and uh, and drive these projects internally. I think that's really what uh, the question from a couple of people on the uh, registration form were. No, fair question, Akshay. And that's uh, what I was telling you earlier, also not much. As a matter of fact, you yourself can go to the website of a lot of these tools. They're mm -hmm. fairly intuitive. So that... Over the point earlier that gone are the days when we had very complicated ERPs and UE training modules and system administrators. Today, a lot of these things can be done by you. Okay. So, 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 Akshay, like by my, my only submission is see, you can always go down the path of building a expensive proposition. Right? Mm -hmm. And for that, you need to articulate. So for instance, let's say you are a CEO, right? And you want to hire a CTO. Even before you do that, right? You need to define the job description of that CTO, right? right? So that you can then go into the market and figure out who will be the best candidate to meet your profile, right? Just the very fact that you need to write the job description, right? And look for the talent outside requires you to have that kind of understanding of what help do you need from them, right? Mm. And that is paramount for a couple of reasons. First is obviously you need a very articulated JD to attract a good talent. It goes without saying. Second thing is the cost part of it. Because in India, there is almost like a right now a path comes to the tech talent and it can be very expensive. So just because you have some stuff like my advice to you is don't do that. First, define the JD and talk to the person who is the best fit for that particular part. And the way you can define the JD is you need to yourself have a certain degree of understanding of what these tools are supposed to do for you. And the good news is that it's not difficult anymore. You don't need an intermediary to even explain to you that what a CRM does or an HRMS does or like, you know, uh, so uh, think of it any kind of SOR, a statement, uh, you know, system of record, like what uh, these guys, uh, most of these B2B SaaS so with the with the need level then for digitization, I mean it being obvious and uh, and with tools being available, easy to implement. What do you feel is stopping companies or preventing them from uh, getting on on this journey? Uh, what myths, misconceptions, uh, uh, fears can we address in this particular forum so that people can uh, make a start if they're already at a certain level? Uh, you know, invest in taking their companies to the next level. No, that's a great question. Actually, honestly, uh, I don't know about the myths that uh, prevent people from doing. So, uh, 
to your point sometimes we just think of digitization is the reality that we don't support. and uh, we are just comfortable in our own uh, you know own bubble of saying that hey we have been doing this for the last x number of years it has worked for us and it might work for us in future both the statements are not true right what got us from a to b is not going to get us from b to c and b right now digitization is not something very esoteric which requires you to talk to a cto or have an advanced degree in engineering or anything of that sort right you can pretty much start reading learning there like i can tell you 20 calls. as a matter of fact i I, I, though I'm an engineer by training, I'm a chemical engineer, right? So I had no background. I did a course in machine learning free of cost on Coursera, just to get an understanding of when I'm talking to my data scientists, what they're talking about. And it's all free of cost. The only thing it took from me is a certain amount of time, right? So where I'm coming from in terms of the biggest challenge is just the fact that, first of all, we need to understand it's not a question of if it's a question of when, right? Datization is happening. There is uh, absolutely you know, no way of not doing it. And the second thing is uh, just ensuring that, you know, good news is you do it yourself. Right? And we are talking to founders who have that mindset of saying, you let me first get my hands dirty to see what, what am I talking about. So you mentioned Coursera, uh, you know, Coursera on machine learning, any other, uh, you know, channels, newsletters, feeds uh, that you su suggest either from your industry or, uh, you know, outside your industry as well, that that we as entrepreneurs, founders, leaders can use uh, to stay abreast with latest digital trends. There's a lot of noise out there. Uh, so which ones do you rely on or which ones do you know of that uh, that could be useful for this group? Yeah, that's again, actually asking very difficult questions. <laughs> so filtering signal from noise in a sector which is as hot as tech is a very, very challenging question, right? Because... Now with this whole web 3.0 coming in, the NFTs, the metaverses, as you rightly pointed out, right? Oh, the advances here, there. God only knows which direction it's going to move, right? So, it, so I think what I generally rely on instead of naming a source, what I generally rely on So what is circle your story, whatever, India, it's your story and stuff like that. But at least it gives you posted in terms of, say, where the markets are moving, in what direction they are moving. Right? So this is more from a future perspective piece of it. The second part, as you rightly pointed out, is that if you have some understanding, you have identified a learning need. Today, you have so many edtech platforms, right? And as a matter of fact, you will get a lot of this information for free, whether it's a Coursera, Udacity, Udemy, or Looking India, you have an upgrade or... Uh, uh, you know, I don't know whether Baiju's offer uh, these kind of vocational pro programs as well, but I'm sure they'll have something or the other in this nature. You can take very specific courses, right? You can take courses in digital marketing, right? And it, even within that, you can get five of them. And if you're looking for a certification, yes, you have to pay for it, but you can also get a certification if you're looking for it, right? So my suggestion to people is at a very, very high level that try seeing the VC industry and where the investments are happening because that gives a sense of the future. And the second thing is, while you are reading about something, uh, knowing and understanding are two different things. Let's put it that way, right? You can know a lot of things through these articles and stuff like that. But if you really have to understand them, uh, I, I don't think there's a silver bullet. You need to go through the grind of taking a class. Uh, we, we all do, right? At whatever level we are. So we have to do it, right? Because we have to be uh, abreast with what's happening in the world. Right. Uh, I just want to pick up Dawal on a point that you uh, spoke about social media and digital marketing. So there were a lot of questions that also came from uh, members about uh, the different platforms, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, etc. Uh, how, uh, how to uh, map it to the needs of your company uh, because each business is different. So uh, given where you are in Hotstar and you probably have a very clear idea of the demographics of each of these, uh, of each of these uh, platforms, uh, could you shed light on how Hotstar, for example, uh, targets or you, you know, user groups in these uh, so that uh, then I as a, as a business owner can match? Okay, I think Snapchat is not for me, but Instagram is and uh, LinkedIn is, but Twitter is not, etc. So a little bit on the demographics of this uh, typically in the Indian, uh, in the Indian context. Sure. So let me take a stab at it. So I think uh, first two, everybody 
Facebook and Google, right? So when I say Google and governance marketing, right? You need the reach. Whether whatever filters you put uh, on top of that, you need the reach. And no other platform comes even close to a Facebook or a Google, right? Okay. So within phase, and both of these are walled gardens, right? So they have their own systems, own uh, 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 ad exchanges, so on and so forth. Within Facebook, you will get Instagram and a bunch of other the platforms that they have, and same applies to Google as well, right? So if you're starting with it, you're doing performance. These are the platforms that you definitely need to start with. Because they have the highest reach, and therefore whatever filter give you for those kind of uh, the, 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 the second part is coming that specifically when you are talking about B two B companies, right? So now with B two B companies, it's always difficult to target consumers on Facebook or a Google, and that is where at least in my limited experience, what I've seen that LinkedIn does a far better. So and honestly, as a matter of fact, the only from that if you are doing a very targeted B two B, it may not have the reach of a Facebook or a YouTube, but it definitely reaches to the right set of stakeholders, and uh, it also kind of caters to a particular user behavior because you don't go on LinkedIn to while away your time. <laughs> go to LinkedIn to you know, it, 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 you are not browsing photos on LinkedIn. Let's put it that way, right? <laughs> so you are there with the intent to either get recruited or recruiting somebody and stuff like that, right? So I think from a B two B perspective, people definitely need to have a LinkedIn strategy on top of whether they want to do performance in other platforms or not. The third part comes around awareness and building. Now, the rest of the platforms need to be considered right? because they may not have the reach, but they have definitely the affinity of people or the cohorts that you are targeting, right? So, for instance, if you are targeting teens, right, especially in tier one markets. Instagram and Snapchat is the place to go, right? Uh, if you are targeting that kind of generation at year two, tier to go. Now TikTok has been similarly. If you want that association with cricket, with that phenomenally builds your brand, right? Then the association comes to Hotstar automatically, right? Because we host cricket. Right? Mm. So the last part is a little tricky part, the awareness part, where you really need to know your audience, where they are, and then target that particular piece. So just to summarize it, I think everybody who's doing digital marketing should use Facebook and Google because of the reach. Nobody has their reach. If you are specifically a B two B company, definitely consider LinkedIn because of it's definitely more expensive at a you know just a CPM kind of rates as compared to a Facebook, but it is far more effective. At least that's a little. I don't have data to support it, but that's mostly based on my experience. Last but not the least, awareness campaigns where you're doing brand buildings, then you should consider these other platforms and essentially what is the kind of you need to define your brand vision, what value you want to derive, and so on and so forth. Right? Because in cricket. When we are selling it to a brand, one of the great brand values that they derive is just the association with cricket, right? Mm -hmm. If you tell them that hey, I'm sponsoring IPL, you are telling India that we have arrived, right? Because not any start, any or like a small business can go there and sponsor IPL. It just costs you so so much of money, right? So in a way, a lot of these startups when they do uh, sponsor IPL, very tentpole Indian cricket, right? So I think there's a question which I probably just respond to is from Devesh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm pronouncing the name correctly, and he said that you know what other B two B ought to use, and since LinkedIn has not given us results, so honestly I can't think of an online platform because see, what we also need to understand that uh, whatever marketing you do, right, everything is also contingent on the price point that you're operating on, right. So let's take an example of selling real estate. Right? No matter what you use, you can't close a million dollar house on any online platform. It's just not possible. Right? It's just not possible because the moment you reach a particular price point, whether it's two hundred dollars or what is the price point, right? In interaction. So as a matter of fact, these potential customers onto their site, on site, and take them through the product demo, etc., in a very, very closed environment. Right, and it is unfortunately you have to go offline for that. Makes sense. Uh, 
another question uh, another question on 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 similar lines davel was on uh, data protection confidentiality secrecy etc so you spoke a little bit of uh, hotstar and it's always been of interest to me uh, the how hotstar or any of these ott platforms who cannot afford a single uh, single uh, you know leak managed to keep their information preserved uh, so how some insights on how you, how how uh, you guys do it as also what you know smes can do in terms of systems tools to mitigate the risk of data leak of uh, hacking of uh, all the other issues that can uh, that can compromise your it systems now again it's a great question because the, the unfortunate to that is uh, you know I, i'm trying to quote I, i can't remember the quote but the whole idea of that quote is that you know if you do something good something some other guy will figure out something to do it make it not work right and there's a constant chase that let's say you created an uh, virus then came an antivirus then came a virus that can you know trojan or something that can bypass that part so it's a it's a consistent uh, continuous kind of a process right here we have to keep on top of it on a consistent basis right so couple of good things have happened i think the first thing that has have risen up to the fact of saying that this is the serious bit of ASP unregulated right so that has happened and i think europe has a detailed set of guidelines uh, so does us now india and especially rbi on payment instruments has uh, given a detailed kind of uh, uh, you know guidance what to do and what not to do right certainly we expect that uh, there will be a detailed guidance on crypto very soon from the government as well right so the, that's the one good thing that is already happening uh, though obviously regulatory environment is uh, being provided to ensure data secret, uh, privacy security it's all that is also happening you know a lot of the solutions that you buy now less in bit Right. So, for instance, if we are in addresses or whatever you are using, tally, right? Majority of them, if not all, will be storing your data, let's say, in an encrypted fashion. Right? Up to what extent encryption they use depends on how much you are willing to pay and stuff like that. But yeah, at least the bare bones are always there, right? So it's not that you know you are dependent on any of these solutions. So that's the other thing is that a lot of these. So obviously, when you are buying and purchasing. it always pays to pay a little higher for having a more a higher security right then going further down the path is the fact of saying that yes even when you are building your infrastructure you can put those additional layer simple security protocols for instance let's say if some of you are using cloud right you're using aws try to uh, take a you know private instance there not a public instance even when you take a private instance on the cloud ensure that uh, the core keys are not socialized with a larger group right it should just decide with one or two people i could not like in my last company uh, uh, as a start only my cto had those keys to aws even i didn't have it the protocol was if something happened to him only in that instance the company can request the keys to be issued to me right so we had gone and that was just a startup that i'm not talking about the hotstar as well right hotstar example probably relevant because we have a lot of this right? i think i can tell you that in spite of all of the, we also make mistakes it costs us dearly and i think many people on the call would remember the time when an unfortunate hap- incident happened at hotstar and a game of thrones episode got leaked yeah correct uh, so it has so having the best sister that i was telling you earlier right there's always something that can go wrong and it happens to all of us but my sense there is that you should definitely keep yourself updated the good news is that the vendors from where you are buying the technologies and stuff like that most of them are any if you have the money then obviously you should have i will say but only if you have the money you see okay uh there were a couple of questions about the industry outlook uh, since you know uh, sorry uh, i i i lost i said i like have a couple of questions about the industry outlook your industry outlook since you are with us here uh, 
uh, today. So from a, from a digitization perspective for a company like Hotstar plus Disney, which is primarily a digital company, uh, what, apart from you know consumer insights, viewership insights and advertisement CTRs, et cetera, what does the digitization company uh, teams at, at companies like Hotstar uh, work on? So what are, uh, you know, it'll just give us a peek into uh, what we will be, hopefully all of us will be a few years down the line, uh, since most of us hope to achieve the same scale. Uh, so what, yeah, so what, what is, what is it that OTT, I mean, of course you won't share what's, what's confidential, but what can, what are OTT players currently working on in terms of uh, uh, digitization? I'm sure just waiting for, uh, I think there's an issue at Davils and he's joining back. Davil, are you here? Well, uh, Davil, come, Saksha, do you want to take a few questions as well from your perspective? Uh, I, I can hear Davil, I guess. Yes, I think Davil. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, go ahead, Davil. Yes, I'm so sorry again. So sorry for this uh, again. Uh, so can you hear me now, Akshay? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. So, uh, no fair question, Akshay. I think, uh, see, uh, the journey for digitization where, so let me talk a little bit about how we are structured, right? So, uh, when we talk about our technology and core, so literally our technology can be broadly divided into three parts. Right? So, one part is obviously IT security, the CIO piece of it, right? That I was just talking about, mm -hmm. where people are so these systems broadly from two or three so one is all our support so for instance our hrms's the crms whatever we are managing so they are all uh, the second one is because a lot of So, what sorry, can you repeat this? Can you so, repeat the second one you said? So, you spoke about IT security and your CIO role. Yeah. yeah. So, that's the internal part of it. Then the other part is okay. now when we are talking about that particular part, we pretty much keep the 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 the, 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 the user journey. I was telling you about that, you know, we need to just ensure that we are tracking the user really, really well in whatever we do. Right? And the few ways of doing it. First thing is that we need to ensure that, you know, product design. So for that matter, the UX of a product is pretty much as optimized to the user experience as possible. Right? I'll give you a very simple example. There's a strong correlation, no matter what online you take, the more number a user has to do to get to the end objective, right? The higher are the chances of the user to bump. Right? So you sign behind the UI UX design, right? That's just one part of it. The other part of it is our whole AI infrastructure because we are collecting so much of information about the user. We normally have to ensure that we are not doing anything which is against regulation, against our corporate thoughts, but at the same time, using the AI to offer experiences to our users. And that's huge team for us that's a huge team for us that goes into every aspect of you know what you see can which is just there to ensure that all my servers my backend consistently are running right and that's the cost of mistake right so i'll give an example uh, and some of you might have seen the india pakistan posted on hotstar and there was a glitch in our server that didn't allow us to process payment for almost an hour. I can't put you what, how much did we lose on that, but it was a pretty substantial amount. And just in a glitch that happened on the back end. Mm -hmm. So those are the three broad areas that we actually focus on. I'm happy to double click on any one of them if that's of it. I really wanted to keep it at a higher level just to see that it would be most beneficial. Yes, one, one thing that has always been of interest to me is why targeted 
targeted advertising happens on YouTube and why not on a Hotstar or a, uh, or a Sony Live, which you know where live cricket or live uh, news happens. So is that is that something that could happen in the uh, in the new near, near future? One of the other ideas that you know I've discussed with friends etc. is that if you're if your own if you're in if you're an India fan, you're in India and your team ends an over or a or an innings on a high. Uh, can advertising then be uh, targeted, you know, for a celebratory product, a drink, uh, a beverage, etc.? Uh, so, is that something that is in the realm of possibility? And also, another thing, uh, other thing about the model itself, which was of interest, uh, was why why is it that after after paying uh, a subscription, I am still seeing ads? I know I know what the reason uh, could be, but is there a is there a future where in India as well you can have an ad free subscription? subscription on the OTT networks. So, sorry, Akshay, I, I dropped you for 30 seconds, but I got the gist of the question of saying that, you know, can we, first question was like, can we do targeted uh, 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 advertisements, right? I yeah. think the, the technology can be deployed, but again, it goes back to the question of reach, right? Because if you don't have the reach of a YouTube and you start targeting, right, your reach reduces to such an extent that probably doesn't make sense for an advertiser anymore. The second thing is also the intent with which the advertiser comes to you, right? So for instance, for us, let's say IPL, right? Now IPL, the intent hardly is performance. Right? It's probably the wrong property to choose if you want to do performance marketing, right? The intent primarily is brand building, right? And in that particular thing, it's not about a question of saying that whether today you want to buy a Pepsi right now or Domino's, but the whole idea is to deliver the message of what we stand for, right? That whenever that time comes, the top of mind awareness always exists. So in short, in future, absolutely, yes, but it will be a function of the intent with which the advertisers comes as well as the reach. The technology is not, I mean, it's, uh, I won't use the word commodity, but it's a fairly uh, understood science. Let's put it that way, okay. the technology piece of it. The second part, I believe you were asking that, can we give uh, live sports without ads? If I'm not mistaken, sorry, I didn't yes, hear please. it. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, sir, that goes back to the market dynamics in India. <laughs> Unfortunately, you might have often heard that India is a low ARPU market, right? So, uh, it's extremely difficult for us to make a unit economy work on live sports. Uh, uh, come to think of it, right? Uh, the rights for IPL, uh, everybody knows about them, right? They run into a few billion dollars, right? Uh, and unfortunately, if you take the ARPU for us in India, it's just a fraction of a global ARPU. So we cannot make the unit economics work on live sports by not serving ads. So that's the hard reality of it. But yeah, if we can match the global ARPUs, then obviously, uh, I mean, we would love, as, as you would have noticed that at the highest tier, we don't show ads for the content, uh, not for sports, but for entertainment content, uh, Hotstar doesn't show ads. Okay, okay. So but that's the that's end of of yeah, we're almost at the end of the time that we had uh, we had together. Uh, I'd like to thank you uh, very much. A couple of questions that we have that have not been answered as yet, I will I will come to. Uh, but before that, a reminder, everyone, please fill up the feedback that uh, you know Ruchika will uh, Ruchika will uh, post in the next couple of minutes. Uh, if you can isolate the content etc. of the session from the uh, uh, from the issue about the uh, internet, that would be great. I know we've had some uh, internet glitches, but the SN team is always looking to uh, use this feedback to improve uh, future uh, you know future uh, sessions. Uh, so a couple of questions, Dhawal, uh, uh, to close. So how does how do manufacture so, uh, manufacturing SME? Uh, you know, prioritize its applications uh, that it needs for uh, digitization. So there are hundred things that you know can be done: HRMS, uh, uh, ERP, production scheduling, uh, support desk portal. Uh, you know, getting your customers to be able to a portal where customers to do an online uh, you know code generation directly without you having to manually do it. Uh, so how would you how would you recommend uh, a company prioritizes? So honestly, I have not. So my day, something I distinctly remember from my days there that I think the biggest uh, onus was always given that no matter what you do, there should never be a stock out, right? And uh, it's a fairly complicated problem because you have to ensure that the inventory levels are managed and. But now I'm not sure that they'll be 
is one solution that solves it all. But your answer will be phenomenal. Uh, un unfortunately, uh, Gaurav, I'm not a distributor management systems and transport management systems. So I can't intelligently comment on those. Uh, but my only two cents is any system or automation or technology that allows you to you know, ensure no stock out because the cost of stock is normally high. Very good. And another, another one we had uh, earlier, uh, Dawal, and this could be our last of the evening, uh, was um, any use cases if you have for, for offering a favorable ROI in the manufacturing uh, space that are purely catering to smaller business. So uh, how can business owners map that you know, digitization effort in that domain uh, to uh, getting returns for the business? So honestly, I don't have anything off the cuff. Actually, I'll be more than happy to find out and use my contacts and I'll share that with uh, Ruchika and Archana if I am, that they can then share with the broader good, uh, group. I uh, Unfortunately, I don't have anything off the cuff because the examples that I was also talking about happen to come from Unilever factories, which are not exactly SME. <laughs> so they, are, they have a different set of modality and that's the reason I didn't want to you know go deeper into that particular logic. Like, uh, because obviously when you're getting into not just manufacturing, you also need to understand supply chain issues. Because a stock out is uh, not just a manufacturing issue, it also creates a massive supply chain. There's something called a bullwhip effect. Right? And I'm sure people can read that up, but it can create a humongous issue down the pipe. And that's the reason uh, we, whatever we did, we ensured that there's no stock out. And a lot of that used to be manual back in the day. Okay. Great, Daval. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I think it's been uh, great listening to you. Uh, personally, I've had a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of takeaways. The biggest one, uh, perhaps being the need for strategy to control uh, finance. It's something that I have to push both within my organization as well as, uh, as, well as in customers. Uh, and also the insight you gave about being where your customer is, not trying to aim too high in terms of uh, these digitization efforts, starting small uh, and being incremental. I think that's something that I'll uh, take away as well. I'm sure our uh, the rest of our participants will also have a lot, a lot that they took away. Uh, I need still need to read up a little bit more about private keys uh, because that's something that uh, I don't even know what what they are. Uh, but since we use a lot of these uh, tools as well, AWS, uh, Azure, etc., I'm guessing they exist. I have no idea who holds those keys. Uh, so that's something I'm going to find out immediately after this uh, session. Uh, once again, thank you uh, so much uh, for you for joining us. Uh, thank you to everyone who has been part of this uh, session. Uh, before leaving, please do drop your uh, drop your feedback, and uh, we'll see you again in the next hours. Ask the expert uh, very soon. Uh, Dhawal, thank you once again.